You're listening to The Human Upgrade with Dave Asprey. Formerly, you're listening to The Human Upgrade with Dave Asprey. Today's episode is one that I, I just have been looking forward to for a long time. It is with a, a dear friend, a guy who's taught me so much, and a guy you've probably heard of, uh, John Gray. He's author of a very famous book, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus, and probably, oh, what, 40 other books? How many books have you written now, Oh, John? just 25, just 25. Oh, no, oh my gosh, I, I'm such a slacker. I, I'm at eight, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> just to be congrats, clear. congrats, yeah. They're amazing um, books. Oh, thank you. Uh, truly, uh, coming yeah. from you, that, that means a lot. The thing I wanted to chat about here is, you know, things have changed since the 90s. And so you wrote a, a then and now version of this with the idea being even over that you know, 20 or 30 year range that the most common relationship problems are, at least between men and women, are because of fundamental psychological differences between the sexes. Has anything changed in, in that view in your, over the course of your last 30 years? Or is this just kind of, this is a fundamental problem? Well, I think men are still men, women are still men, women. But the challenges we face are completely different. As soon as women started being independent from men, making more money, being independent, being highly educated, uh, what do they need a man for? So that changed everything. <laughs> so yeah. uh, many, many single women will say... <laughs> Why do I need a man in my life? Well, if you don't know what you need a man for, why do I want to be with you? Because ultimately, men are looking for a job. They want to be successful. Everything we do is to be successful. And, and many women listen here and go, yeah, I want that too. That's her masculine side. But if you're a man and you have a biology of a man, feeling successful in providing for others, solving problems, getting things done, setting goals and achieving those goals produces male-friendly hormones, testosterone. And women with the same intention of solving problems, fixing things, achieving your goals, making money, they make testosterone as well. And it's not that testosterone is not female-friendly, it's just testosterone doesn't lower a woman's stress levels. Testosterone will lower a man's stress levels. And how I say that is, when a man is experiencing high cortisol levels, chronic stress, his testosterone levels are low. When a man is feeling really no stress, but motivated, challenged, his testosterone is at its maximum place. Then if he's in a, a physically intimate relationship, his testosterone can go even higher. So you can make all the money in the world, but if the woman's not adoring you in bed, you're not going to reach the highest level you can get to. <laughs> so you'll see many successful men do have uh, physical intimate experiences at a very high level, which is, this is how we're set as men. If you're out there making love, your testosterone levels will be higher. Because, I mean, think about my work and your work. When we're standing in front of the audiences at your big conferences, which are such a delight, and you get a standing ovation from those people, you're, you just feel fantastic. Your testosterone has shot up. That is because I have served them and they're acknowledging and appreciating me. So testosterone goes up. That's what men thrive on. And on another world, uh, with playful men are from Mars, women are from Venus, there's the female-friendly hormone, estrogen. And when a woman is depressed, stressed, unhappy, her estrogen levels will typically be too low. And if her estrogen levels are normal and healthy, she is happy. And then for her to be happier, and we'll call that orgasm, her estrogen levels have to double. If her estrogen levels don't double or can't double, she's not going to experience that highest peak of connection and bonding that's possible for couples today. But you have to learn some good skills to keep that going. Hmm. I dated this absolutely just wonderful woman. Um, for a while. And she came over to my house one day and she said, Dave, um, I've decided that men are here to make women happy. And this is a woman who studies relationships for a living. And, and I, I just kind of laugh, but it made me think of your work. Like, like guys just want to be useful. We want to be successful. What would you say to her? Well, from one point of view, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> a man just wants to make a woman happy. And, and let me give you some foundation for this because I'm not a people pleaser. 
you know, sometimes when men hear me saying, look, men just want to make women happy. They think, oh, you're just some kind of wimp, people pleaser. And go, hold mm. on, hold on. <laughs> you're, <laughs> no. you're only a wimp if you're not being adored and appreciated and acknowledged and trusted yeah. and accepted just the way you are. If you're giving up who you are, then you're a wimp. And, mm-hmm. and I don't, so when, when I say men just want to make women happy, let me just tell you mm-hmm. men who are married who decide to get a divorce women who are married and they decide to get a divorce, what women will almost always say, I give and I give and I give and I don't get back. Okay. (laughs) So I have nothing left to give. That's what women will say. What do men say? They typically will say, no matter what I do, it's never enough to make her happy. That's our bottom line. We really just want our wives to be happy. And if she's happy, what's the message I get? I'm getting a standing ovation. When I come mm-hmm. home, I'm getting a standing ovation. It doesn't look like a standing ovation, but, but it's a woman who, who's it's happy. It's laying on your back ovation. Is that what you're saying, John? It's what? A lay on my laying back. Laying on your back ovation. <laughs> it's usually for me in the morning, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> so there, there's some sort of loop around being a, a source of safety, groundedness, being a provider, all the other, I don't know, guy things. And that's creating a rise in estrogen, which creates appreciation, which then fuels additional intimacy. Am, am I reading that Her appreciation. Right? It, yeah. if, I, if I do the things you just mentioned, mm-hmm. providing, uh, being supportive in a way which makes her feel supported, not what I think is supportive. Okay, let me qualify that. Let's say I make a lot of money. At a certain point, so what? You know, she can always get a lawyer and keep that money. So that's the dark side of divorce. So, you know, women have figured this out. And, and let's add to it. Let's say I make a, a lot of money, but she also makes a lot of money. Mm-hmm. And they're similar. Why does she need me? So why is she going to appreciate? It's kind of like, look at all this do things I do for you. She says, well, I do that too. What else are you doing for me? So that's sort of the picture today. When women mm-hmm. could not make money and they lived in a dangerous world, to have a man was amazing. And you had huge appreciation because you felt this is something of meaning and value to me that I need. Need is a word that's become a bad word because you can be needy and, and, and that's awful. Needy is I need you and you're not providing. Okay. <laughs> that's needy. Mm-hmm. I need you and you're not giving me enough. I need you. And when you don't give me what I need, it hurts inside. And that's really immature, it's too demanding, it's not a good relationship skill. And this is this phrase that women are all being taught to say now, which is that hurts. Okay, everything hurts. We've become this hypersensitive society of my feelings are hurt. Now, when your feelings are hurt, the part of you that's feeling hurt is probably about seven years old inside of you. Mm -hmm. This is the most immature part of us. So let me give you an example of how this would look. I have a, a friend, and he's a successful businessman. He does well in his life. He's a biohacker. He's a very cool guy. And he's got a beautiful girlfriend, okay? And he loves her, and she's amazing, and they have amazing physical intimacy, and there's nothing to complain about. And then he says, okay, this weekend, I want to go fishing with my buddies. And she says, but if you go fishing with your buddies, it hurts. Do you want to hurt me? Is that... <laughs> Do you still want to go fishing with your buddies if that hurts me? Wow. He goes, listen, I don't want to hurt you, but I also need time to, for my life. I can't always be with you fulfilling your needs here, which I enjoy doing when I have time for that and I'm with you. And so this idea of I feel hurt becomes the ultimate manipulator to control a man. And then what men will often say is, besides my wife is not happy, is I feel controlled. And women go, but I'm not trying to control you. They don't, they're not aware that negative emotions to a man can seem controlling. And why? Because we so much want them to be happy. Because when she's happy, I take credit for it, right? So I feel great. I take her to a movie. And she goes, that was a great movie. On a personal level, I feel like I wrote that movie. You know, <laughs> it's, it's <laughs> like, you know, you've developed all these great products. So if your wife's taking your products and drinking your products, <laughs> and, and she's saying, I feel fantastic. You feel, yep, I did that. So men will tend to take credit for how women feel, but 
that's a bit of our neurosis as well, because if she doesn't feel good, then we feel bummed out. And bottom line, if, if I'm speaking to an audience and half the audience leaves, I'm going to be pretty bummed out, right? Because okay. as perfect as we want to be, I'm still attached to, hey, I want everybody to be happy with my talks. And if a few go, that's all right. But if half leave, what a bummer. Uh, it triggers uh, unhappy feelings in me. So success is, again, coming back to, and I like to bring it back to hormones because this is, this is your facts, okay? Yeah. Men need to make, just for feeling good, 10 times more testosterone than an average woman. And who's feeling good. And to be a biohacker, Superman, live long life, you have to have higher testosterone. You know, at 72 years old, my average testosterone is, is 50% higher than when I was a young man. I'm doing all right then. <laughs> without supplementing. The, and without, this is, I don't uh, do any supplements. No, I, I mean, I do supplements, but not for testosterone. One of my favorite supplements Oh, it was Tonkat Ali. I love Tonkat Ali, and, so but I can't common. even take it. I, I would just have erections oh, stopped, all the time. You stopped taking it. No kidding. Okay, oh, so guys, Tonkat Ali, common testosterone raising herb. I don't yeah, take it it's, either. It's a really good one if your testosterone's low because it also, one of its functions is it inhibits the transfer of testosterone into estrogen. What's that hormone that does that? It's aromatase. Aromatase. So, Tonkat Ali is an aromatase inhibitor because that's one of the problems for men is we can have this testosterone and as soon as a woman's not happy with us, we get upset. And what's just occurring is now your estrogen levels are going higher. It's like if you take too much testosterone, too much, then it will convert into estrogen because your body's always trying to find the right balance and you get man boobs, you know, which is, or if you're too far <laughs> on your female side, you get man boobs. I've struggled with man boobs for my my whole life. Uh, when I was younger, I was obese, and I always had them. All the guys in my family have them. It's a, a testosterone pathway thing, and I don't have them at all uh, because I finally managed the conversion of testosterone into estrogen the right way. I use Crisin, uh, which is similar to to Tonkat Ali, but it doesn't raise testosterone. It just stops it from going down that pathway. And if I forget to take it, <laughs> give me about three days. I'm like, oh, tender nipples. <laughs> and it's irritating. But even though I'm very lean and, and extra extra body fat makes extra estrogen, it still it still happens. And managing it with herbs, whether it's Tonkat or Krizen, uh, seems like a really good idea. Um, so, but you're not doing either one of those because you're t you make a lot of testosterone because of your uh, we'll call it energetic and sexual practices and your relational practices and your probably your diet. But but then do you take something to manage conversion to estrogen, or you don't need to do that either? No, I don't. So uh, it's you're like the man's man hormonally and naturally. <laughs> well, I, nothing was natural. Uh, when I recognize how clearly gender differences trigger different hormones. So if I let myself uh, talk about anything I'm feeling sorry for myself or argue or raise my voice, any of those symptoms of, of using negative emotions to create a response in somebody, my estrogen levels will flare very, very high. So, so, so whining is bad. Whining is really bad for men. Complaining is really man from, uh, bad for men, particularly to a woman that you're arguing with. Because then you're using negative emotions to create a result. Negative emotions okay. is like the lowest level, animal level inside of us. Oh. Isn't that what like social justice warriors, every protester out there is complaining yeah. Yeah, their, their testosterone oh. levels are just so down if they're men. Their mm. estrogen levels are so high. They're petty. They're picky. They're hypersensitive. Their feelings are hurt all the time. As I like, mentioned, right there's feelings. But oh. this is the dynamic. What happens to women is if they're out there complaining, uh, mm -hmm. it's like porn uh, for men. See, porn is not productive for men. We might talk about that later, but just it, right now. It feels good, but it's bad for us, right? That's right. It feels good. The reason it feels good is because it super raises testosterone. When a man looks at porn, I mean, if you go online and you just look at 60, go to free porn, 64,000 women are waiting to have sex with you in your subconscious mind. So you're alpha man. You're like the king of the tribe. And, and so your testosterone shoots off really, really high. And it will go way down afterwards. Now, way down is called baseline. 
even if you don't ejaculate it, what if you just like look at it for a while and get turned on and then don't ejaculate? Well, I'll tell you, being a master of not ejaculating, which is part of my <laughs> my high testosterone, I never mm-hmm. ejaculate. I mean, I could in in a second. See, that's the thing. I've you know, I'm a very in touch with my female feeling, or my feelings, okay, my female mm-hmm. side. My estrogen levels are also very high. It's just my testosterone is so much higher. Uh, being in touch with feelings when you're over there, that's the reason we ejaculate, other than mm. the fact we get addicted to it. But it's when, you know, when something feels so good, this feels so good, I want more and more of this. <laughs> when anything feels good, you're producing female hormones. That's why you look at manly men. I won't call myself a manly male, but if you watch Joe you're, Rogan, you're a well balanced guy. Yeah. I'm a well balanced <laughs> guy. But you get this uh, big guys, and Joe Rogan was interviewing one of them. He said, tell me your routine. He says, I get up every morning at four o'clock. I run huge amount of distance. I forget what it is, miles and miles. It's, it's probably and, my th- friend Jocko, maybe. <laughs> I, don't, I don't, but he, he runs miles and miles. Then he comes <laughs> back. Me, but, yeah. And then okay. he gets into a freezing cold bath. You know, he gets into the ice thing. And, yeah, yeah. and then, then you finish with that. You just, he says, and I feel like a million bucks. I'm King Kong. I'm the king of the world. You know, I, and, and I know that feeling. So I feel that way. And then Joe says, do you like getting up like that? I hate it. I hate every minute of it. I oh, hate it. I hate it. has to be David Goggins. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> yeah, just, but I, I use that example because yeah. for, for people to understand that high testosterone guys have to do stuff that is not easy. You've got to do difficult, challenging stuff, and you don't like it. See, whenever you're liking something, you're making estrogen. Whenever you're enjoying something, you're making estrogen. When you're depending on something to make you happy, that's an estrogen stimulator. Now, actually, when you're depending on yourself to be productive, to do something that you you believe is productive and good for you and good for others and so forth, you, you set a goal and I'm going to achieve that goal. So I tell men, particularly for men, set goals. And you know, for some men, just write them out. You know. Put it out there, and then when you take action to achieve those goals, your testosterone levels go up. And that's an again quality of, of talk to young men about. You know, you want your testosterone to go up. Make promises. When you make a promise, you're setting a goal, and then you follow through. So, you know, my joke is I don't make that many promises now. <laughs> it's too hard. If I if I say I'm going to do something, I have to do it. So if I'm not really sure I'm going to do it, I don't make the promise. But you know, being a person of integrity, it's such yeah. a good quality. It would be our male side has that integrity, strengthens us that if I don't like it, if it's hard or whatever, but I said I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. And that process, that mental process of taking action to achieve your goals is a huge testosterone booster. I love hearing this. And if you're younger, One of the reasons I do this show, the reason I started my blog on biohacking is I just wish someone had told me this when I was 19 and I was obese and my brain didn't work and I I didn't know all the stuff that I know now and it was only in a way I could understand it. What you're saying is for guys, it's supposed to suck at least for a little while each day. And that's one of the reasons I do do cold plunges or cryotherapy when I have an upgrade labs near me because, well... You know, that little bit, not only is there an effect on testosterone, testosterone and dopamine go together and dopamine is the motivation happiness chemical. So like that's a way to do it. So, okay, so that's that's important. It's supposed to suck. <laughs> and if you set a goal and then do do the goal, your testosterone goes up. If your testosterone goes up, you'll be happier because of dopamine, but you'll probably be more attractive to women too, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Women are saying today, they just feel there's this wishy-washy quality of men and they're just turned off by it. And here's a, here's a paradox. Women will say, I need to know what you're feeling. Dave, what are you feeling? What's going on inside? Talk to me, talk to me. And then they have well, this encouragement of psychology mm-hmm. saying, we're all supposed to talk about our feelings. They don't take in concern. Are you a man? Or are you a woman? Are you a man with high testosterone and you can tolerate talking about some feelings? Are your, your testosterone levels are kind of normal? And you talk about your emotions and your feelings, you're suddenly going, estrogen's going up, your testosterone will go down. So you have to be careful about this talking about feelings things. So one, on one hand, culture's telling women, we all need to talk about our feelings because women do, but they need to learn how to talk about their feelings in a way that doesn't blame men. 
Okay, that's part of it. Mm. You know, so why this happens? One is psychology is telling us we should all talk about feelings. But what will happen is when a man is slightly challenged, okay, a woman's saying something, am I being blamed? Am I supposed to do this better? Did I not do it good enough? Should I actually change? Is she being reasonable? Is she not being reasonable? Is this about, you know, basically, or simply he's thinking, what's the point? Where's she going with this? What am I supposed to do about this? See, men always go to action. So what am I supposed to do about this? So I'm listening to her. What's going to happen in most men is we're going to detach. Testosterone creates detachment. That's also why my testosterone levels are much higher than I was a young man. I'm very detached. You know, I've meditated for 50 years. I'm like a little Buddha. Uh, nothing bothers me. And if it does, I process it quietly inside. I analyze it, let it go with forgiveness, with responsibility. Pardon? You're a master of that. I mean, oh. we've known each other for 10 plus years. And every time I see you, you've, you're just dialed in. You, you don't get rattled. Yeah. No, I'm dialed in. And, and, yeah. But anyway, so, but every guy, when you're challenged by something, what that means is you're starting to have some frustration, some disappointment, some concerns, some worries. Now, when that's, that's estrogen. So if estrogen's going up, I need to balance. And so I need to make more testosterone. The body naturally does this in men. So what we do is we disconnect from our emotions. We disconnect in order to think about. So if you could just look at, I need to think about it, not feel about it. I'm starting to feel about it, not pleasant feelings. That, so I want to find my balance. I'm going to disconnect. So quite often, men will just, they'll be listening and suddenly they suddenly disconnect. We become quiet. We mull it over. And women panic. They freak out. They go, what are you feeling? What's going on? And what they really want to know is that you're not mad at them. <laughs> they, they, a, that you're not willing to punish them. Code. I, I think I figured out the cheat code. In a situation like that, if a woman I'm dating says, what are you feeling? The answer is, I'm feeling horny. And, <laughs> and it, it bypasses everything. And, and like, it, what, what's wrong with that approach? <laughs> I think it's great. I never thought of that one. <laughs> but here's my response. Okay. I have to, have to see how that might work for me. Because basically, well, I'm pretty horny all the time. So you know, even if I'm mad, actually, I don't get that angry. But let me, let me come back to my point. But that was a good answer. If a woman <laughs> says, what are you feeling? What I say, I'm thinking about what you just said. And that'll be enough. And that's basically, they just want to hear a, a friendly tone of voice. It's all in the tone of voice. I'm just thinking about what you just said. Tell me more. And you take them off of you. And this is a danger place because when you start to disconnect, which is very natural, whenever you detach, testosterone goes up. So when you ask me about how I regulate my testosterone levels, I meditate at least one to two hours a day, unless I don't have time to do it. But generally speaking, I'll meditate one to two hours. In meditation, you learn to detach from the outer world. You're letting go. In a sense, you're forgetting all of your problems in a non-stress state. And again, because forgetting your problems is a very useful testosterone booster, because if I can't solve a problem, that's, you know, you're not, like right now we're solving problems. We're doing our thing. Testosterone mm -hmm. goes up. But at the end of the day, when you can't be solving problems as you're a man, then the next best thing is let me take time to forget my problems that I can't do anything about and solve a problem I can do something about, which is my meditation practice. It's a challenge. You know, when I'm meditating, it takes a lot of willpower, it takes intention, it takes clarity, it takes focus. So I'm applying myself to solve the big problem, which is not the problems of the day. So that was the, the ultimate technique taught for men was meditation. Uh, Buddha is basically teaching you to forget all your problems, go in a state of samadhi. And you can do that, but what you're doing at that time is building huge testosterone. Now, not all, not all men are going to become meditators. They're not all going to become masters of it, so to speak. But what they have is you can just simply go to your cave. That was actually, a whole, my, from my yogic background, well, actually, you've been in caves. I've been in caves, meditating in caves. Yep. Recently, you know, I'm in my cave right now. I'm underground in my office. And then I decided to actually dig even deeper. And I've just built another cave. <laughs> just oh, wow, really? Yes. Cool. It's even deeper. And 
Turns out my soil that my house is on has got crystals all in it. So I said, really, a real good energy. And I go down there and into that uh, cave. And sometimes I'll meditate oh. there. I actually can meditate anywhere. But the point of it is it's a very systematic way to detach from having to solve problems that we can't do anything about and create a problem that we can do something about. And that's what hobbies are for men. So, uh, you know, if you have any kind of hobby a man, has is actually a way he recovers from the day's stress by forgetting that. So now I'm married to my wife and she's upset about her day's stress. And what do men typically say? Well, honey, just forget it. Don't worry about it. It's no big deal. It's not a problem. Well, you can't do anything about now. So why don't we go have sex? You know, these things just don't work with women because they're designed differently. Now, all women, there's a whole spectrum of all different kinds of women, but they're hormonally, women are women. And if they talk about what's going on inside of them, okay, it's like, you see, we're solving problems. We're going out into the world and producing an effect. That's a testosterone producer. An estrogen producer is I'm going to let you come into me and have an effect. See, it's just the opposite. We're complementary. So women on, will talk about their day and by revealing what's inside, they feel seen, they feel heard, they feel you care, they feel understood, they feel validated. But if you're hearing them and then you're making jokes about what they said, they don't feel validated and then they stop talking to you. Or if you get angry at them, and most men will get angry if women just talk about all their feelings, women have to understand just as men have to learn how to listen without interrupting how to ask questions, to give her what she needs, which is to feel heard. How can I hear her if what she's saying is I'm a terrible guy? <laughs> this is what yeah. women are missing. Well, you know, the, the whole idea yeah. of complaining just pushes a man away from you. You don't, you, you don't have to take that as, as a guy and, and it's not appropriate. And you, if you have good boundaries, you're like you, you need to stop that because it's toxic. Right? Very if there's a thing you want to change, we can talk about it, but we're going to talk about it once. You're not going to harp on it. Um, <laughs> serious. So there's a reason that, that's the name for it. You keep playing the harp. So <laughs> and, and I think this is something that maybe you guys need to do in relationships. Um, the other thing that I've I've noticed, well, I wanted let's to talk about, you. you just made a huge point, Dave. How do you not take it? How do you not take it? Well, yeah, th that's that's what I was going to ask you because okay, you know, I, I've been dating for a couple of years now. I'm um, post, you know, post divorce, um, and I've just been fortunate to date some magical people. But when it's one of those those, you know, they're going to share feelings times. There's a grounded thing I do with meditation where I'm like, these are not mine, and and the emotions don't affect me. Like I'm listening, but I don't lose my state. And the feedback I get from that is, wow you're not afraid of my emotions. And then they feel heard because I'm not emotionally reactive to their emotions. And then exactly. they stop talking about them just because I didn't get tweaked. And like, that's it. I wish someone that's it. Me this funny. Just, just be grounded. <laughs> let them say it once. Don't lose your shit. And then they're done. <laughs> that's exactly oh, it. it, it okay. See, what, what happens is women will talk. And if you get triggered and you talk that, it just goes down. If but What you have to do is... What you've learned to do is not get triggered by it. Here's how I don't get triggered by it. But also, I'm going to tell you how I do it. But also, women have some responsibility here too. Absolutely. So, but from my side, if a woman is upset, I have such background of experience with this and knowing that if I don't react, her upset will transform before my eyes. Mm -hmm. So if, if men think if a woman's upset about something, you have to change or do something different for her upset to go away. We think that, but that's not necessary. Yeah, that's do. If you feed them steak, they usually behave themselves better. Is that true? Well, I wouldn't put it that way, but, <laughs> but I like steak. <laughs> I'm just trying to get canceled right now. I'm just, what, my, my point was no, no. that if anyone, male or female, is feeling emotional, eat some animal protein, you'll be more grounded and you'll probably be less emotional. So there you go. <laughs> Well, that's a good a good approach. I I like that. You know, my wife eats actually loves steak, 
Uh, <laughs> so maybe that's what makes it work. I also found having a really good sharp knife when you cut the steak makes a difference as well. <laughs> Just want to throw that in. It really, if you have to struggle with your steak, get a new knife. So you know, what, thank you for it, saying that. Yes, I, I have like I spend huge amounts of money on steak knives because if if your steak falls apart, your testosterone goes up, and if you have to rip at it with a little serrated piece of shit knife, your testosterone <laughs> drops. You grow man boobs, and you pretty much should be eating a toy burger. All right, can we just put that out there? Yeah, let, let's put this as a metaphor that if your knife is not working, then it makes a mess. So the knife for a man is don't get upset when she's talking. Don't get upset when she's talking. Now, what's biologically happening when you get upset? When you're upset, we'll call that a little stress reaction, right? And mm. when a man has a stress reaction, if it's a little stress, like a little adrenaline, he will detach. So that's easy, okay? It's like when a woman's a bit bothered, first of all, a man will detach, okay, I can handle this. But at a certain point, he'll talk and he'll try to solve what she's talking about. And then she's going to go, yes, but. At that point, little stress becomes big stress. You've just given your great advice and it hasn't had an effect on her. So now it's going to be more upsetting to you and you're going to have that estrogen surge. And your estrogen surge just keeps rising higher and higher if you're a man if you're not feeling successful. If you don't feel successful, estrogen goes up and the symptom of your estrogen going up is you get angry and you get intense. And whenever men get angry or intense or argumentative, it will shut a woman down and whatever she has to talk about will now multiply and triple and quadruple. <laughs> it's it's, mm. it's learning, learning to be detached and detachment doesn't mean disinterested. Detachment doesn't mean that I don't care what you're saying. I'm detached, but I realize I have this person I love and they're confused, they're emotional, they're not making sense. I don't say that to them. But when somebody is, here's a general philosophy I have, when somebody's having negative emotions, they're, they're not seeing reality. They're just not being logical. When you're logical, your male side, and you're emotional, your female side, you will always have positive emotions, positive feelings. Whenever you're having negative emotions, there's an imbalance. And that's what a negative emotion is. It's a symptom that says, hey, you need to make an adjustment here and let go of that negative emotion. But the primitive brain goes, if I have a negative emotion, let me use it to create a result. Let me get angry to intimidate somebody. Let me feel sad to get someone to feel sorry for me and help me. Let me have feel fear so I have a justification for not taking ang action and I can run away. I feel guilty uh, in order to have someone trust me again. See, these are all, really, emotions are all manipulations, but I'm not saying that we should suppress our emotions because that would be suppressing a part of who we are. We want to upgrade who we are by feeling the emotion and then transforming it into a positive emotion. And what I've seen to be the case, if I create safety for a woman to express what she's going through, revealing what's inside, if it's negative, it will very quickly turn into positive. Why? Mm -hmm. Because talking about your feelings, whether they're negative or positive, will produce estrogen. See me, hear me, see my sign. I'm a pro <laughs> I'm an activist. I'm opposing. It's, it's like porn because it will produce estrogen, but it does nothing to change your life. Okay. A woman who comes to me for therapy, she's going to first talk about how bad her husband is or her ex-husband is, and she'll talk about that. I will listen to that for a while before I help point out to her how she's also part of the problem. I would never start with that. That would be trying to solve her problem. I'll first help raise her estrogen by being empathetic to whatever her experience is, even though from my male side, I know that she's a part of the problem, just like the other guys a part of the problem. So it's, mm. but you first, we have to, when it comes to a woman, you want to first raise her estrogen. If your estrogen levels go up, her stress level will go down. When her stress level goes down, she can think more reasonably and also more positively on an emotional level. So I know you get this, but let me give another little story here yeah. uh, for, for everybody listening. Just if this is imagination here for a moment. Imagine, you know, we have this uh, hippocampus in our brain and it's the, the memory and this hip memory center. 
And for women, it's generally almost twice as big for them. So think about than a man, because <laughs> which, by the way, answers your question, women. You always have the question, which is, how could you forget? How could you forget? <laughs> <laughs> you have a man's brain, okay, smaller hippocampus. I have a right. smaller hippocampus, honey. Don't take it personally, please. And men are saying, why do you keep remembering everything in the past? <laughs> By every mistake, you remember it all. And that's because she's got a bigger hippocampus. But the hippocampus is, the, is like a library, and it has two stories. And the ground story is all the positive memories. I mean, you're an amazing guy. You do this. You did that for me. You do this for me. You love my kids. You know, just all your best qualities she remembers on the ground floor. And then all of her disappointments throughout the whole relationship and her father and her other relationships, it's all stored on the second floor. So when she's in stress mode, it's like she gets in an elevator and goes to the second floor of the house, of the memory. Mm -hmm. And so all she can think about is, well, you're the guy who didn't do this, and you're the guy who didn't do this, and you're the guy. And as she's thinking that, she's just becoming more upset. So if she can express that, that will expressing what you feel, regardless of whether it's positive or negative, will produce estrogen. When estrogen goes up, if she's deficient in estrogen, now it's going up, her stress level will go down. When her stress level goes down, she's not in fight or flight, she's now on the ground floor. And now suddenly she's remembering all the good things about you. So this is like an amazing thing for men to know is if I just don't take it personally, I don't get upset about it. And here's, men have to take action though. See, it's a key thing with testosterone. Keep your testosterone up is action. You're anticipating success. That's a big testosterone producer. Well, I know that if a woman is upset with me, if I don't get upset back, I win. I will always win. And she will win too eventually. So I know there's a big reward coming for being a good, quote, listener. Now, when in history were men rewarded for being listeners? No way. This is all a whole new thing. Because when in the past did a woman say, oh, my husband's not romantic. My husband's not a good listener. My husband's not tender and affectionate, whatever. Women didn't say that in the past. They say, my husband's a good provider, or he doesn't have a job and he's not a good provider. That was their major need. But as soon as women evolve beyond their survival needs, and they pretty much can take care of that themselves, then what do I need a man for? And a, a new need emerges, and it's an insecurity. It's a deep, deep insecurity emerges, which says, I need a man to reassure me. I need a man to validate me. I need someone to say that I'm okay. And of course, when you're having negative emotions, how can you say someone's okay unless you understand, oh, it's okay. Your estrogen levels are just too low. And if you talk for a while, they'll come back to balance and then you'll remember what a great guy I am. And this, all, this whole model comes from one day in my marriage, I was giving my wife a hug and she was kind of upset, or tense. She was tense. And I gave, we started practicing six second hugs. It turns out that six or seven seconds into a hug, if it's non-sexual, uh, will produce a wave of oxytocin. Oxytocin, you feel safe. And then when you feel safe, you can begin to feel, I can depend on someone. And that raises her estrogen. So now she's feeling safe. Estrogen levels are going up. Remember, anytime you feel I can depend on someone for something of value, estrogen goes up. So when her estrogen starts to go up, she starts to feel better. And after the hug, she said to me, she said, you know, John, for the first part of that hug, I was just uh, frustrated with you. And then I started to remember all the good things you do. And I completely <laughs> relaxed. So women wow. get upset because they just forget the good things that we do. They're temporarily no memory. <laughs> they all, temporarily, they only remember the bad stuff as opposed to remembering the good stuff. So that's the way I win is helping her come back to realizing that she's overreacting. Now, I never say you're overreacting, but if you give women a chance to hear themselves, they'll realize if their estrogen does go up that they're overreacting. Anytime I'm upset, I'm overreacting. Mm -hmm. That's my whole definition of upset is you're not centered and balanced right now. So there, there's a couple scenarios that come up here. So let's say that a guy um, becomes a master of what you're talking about. So you learn how to stay grounded and to, to not... not 
show that you're losing your mind, but also not lose your mind. To actually, like in in your heart, in your in, in your somatic felt sense, you're grounded. And a woman who's important to you in your life is is you know emoting and you know sharing all the feelings and stuff like that. So and you're like, okay, that, that's fine. And you're you're practicing what you said. So by showing them that you you know that you're resolute and you're you're there for them and wrapping them in safety and all the stuff you do. Okay, like it passes and it's good. But if you're in a relationship with someone who it never passes, even when you do all that stuff and it just gets worse and worse and worse. So what's the strategy there? Well, let's take it back a few steps before she got to that place, all right? So, so many times, if my partner was to be bothered by something I said or did, it really annoys me a lot. I get angry inside and then Mm -hmm. she says, oh, what are you feeling? Right. I said, I'm thinking about what you did and tell me more. I never, ever reveal what I feel. But if they you can feel you. They have hearts. But, they, they know. I'm Dave, Dave, if you just simply say, I'm just thinking about what you said, yeah. help me understand it better. You're now in control. See, mm. as soon as you express, well, I'm angry about what you said, or I don't like what you just said, or I don't enjoy being with you when you're like this, you've just gone to your female side and you're asking her to change and that will blow her oh. out of the water. I'm, no, I, I'm, not a, I'm not going there. So, so you do that. Tell me more, tell me more. And I, I've been with people where they... Well, but, hey, let me finish. Okay, then uh, I hear where you're going. I don't say, tell me more, tell me more, tell me more forever. I do it to my point of tolerance and say, now I'm going to think about it and walk out of the room. I don't allow myself to go to that place where I'm getting too upset, where I'm actually, where my frustration, my annoyance, my, my being turned off turns into anger. If it starts to turn into that direction of anger, I stop. Okay, let me think about this. We'll talk about it tomorrow at 12. You just shut them up that way. Because you can't hear what you're saying. You know, right now I can't hear you. That's also confrontive. So basically, oh, yeah. you, you want to just say, I'm, look, I'm thinking about what you said. We can talk more about this another time or tomorrow at 12 or we'll do it at dinner tomorrow. Give them, a, give them a go-to place. In the same way, now let me balance this. You're basically, you want to have sex with your wife and she says, you know, I'm not really in the mood, but I'll let you know when I am. See, that that's such a nicer thing then if I just said, let's have sex, she says, well, I'm really not in the mood now. Well, then you're left with feeling, well, when are you in the mood? And then she'll say, I don't know. That's not an appropriate answer. Okay. It's like, you basically, let's make love tonight. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if I'm in the mood. Uh, we'll see. Better to say, I'll let you know. Then you can relax as opposed to feeling like I'm this dog trying to get pet, pet, you know, it's just, we need to have consideration for the other person. But I'm telling you, so many arguments start when you're start when you become you're listening and then you're getting upset and then a woman will say what are you feeling and as soon as you start to express what you're feeling it all escalates and she has way more to share i'm just saying it out blightly when your wife says what are you feeling i'm just thinking i'm not feeling that's fine there's no feeling i'm just Got thinking it. even if there is feeling don't go there cuz as soon as you, yeah, you're right. I'm getting a little too excited here. As soon as you as soon as you talk about what you're feeling, estrogen levels are going higher. So don't talk. Mm-hmm. Now, if, if you're talking with a buddy, fine. You know, we can make fun. Typically, if you're upset with your guy friends, you make fun of things, you laugh at things, you lighten it up. That's a way of processing feelings. And there's a place, you know, when people hear me, I have to realize they there's so many different parameters. It, when my wife died, I had all, I was only feelings, you know, uh, five years ago, Bonnie passed and I grieved and grieved and cried and was upset and yeah. nothing feeling, you know, that's a, a big problem. Yes, you process it. Little stuff, man, don't let little stuff bother you. It's like, like that book. It's all small stuff, but you can't tell a woman when she's having issues about small stuff this is ridiculous. You're making a big deal out of nothing. Instead, I interpret it. Okay, she just needs to talk for a while about what's bothering her. And then I'm going to give her a hug. And that I don't have to fix anything. I don't have to solve anything. This is a difficult thing to master. I have no question about it. It's definitely something you can master. And, and it feels like too, especially if, if it's earlier on in a relationship, at a certain point where you're going, you know what? The person that I'm evaluating as a potential partner has an awful lot of this, and it's more than I want to deal with, 
right? Because because there are some people who get really stuck in it, and some people who the process works, right? And and it, it feels to me from talking with friends and and you know people who are working with me on various programs, there's a level of of attainment that men have. Well, okay, like this is the amount of input that I can take before I get ungrounded. Right. Good. So that's gonna, good. That's awareness. That's a very important yeah, that, awareness. That's awareness, right? Yeah. But if you found a potential partner and their default level is above your level, okay, wrong you can person. work on your awareness, but it might be the wrong person, and it's okay. Absolutely, like, find, and that's find a, someone who's better matched, right? Absolutely. There, there's a match that we need to recognize. I, I'll tell you a kind of a, a story now, which is very interesting about the match. Every relationship does have challenges. And, and my wonderful relationship with Bonnie over 32 years, and I just love her so much, always loved her, but there were lots of challenges as well. And that's part of how I wrote all my books is how I overcame the challenges in the relationship. And one of the challenges was that Bonnie would never say she's sorry. You know, mm. I, I felt like I'm the one who's saying I'm sorry all the time. And one day I said to her, honey, it just seems like I'm always apologizing and saying I'm sorry. And you don't. And yet you do for everybody else. And, and, and she said, John, when I was growing up, my mother was so hard on me. I mean, everything that went wrong with my brothers or me or her was always my fault, was my fault. It was so painful. And I love you so much. And if I said, I'm sorry to you, I can say it to other people, but if I said, I'm sorry to you, it would crush me if you looked at me and you should be sorry and you didn't mm -hmm. forgive me. So I said in that moment, which is, okay, honey, if you want to say you're sorry about things, that's okay. But from now on, you don't have to. Now, what that did for me, I have to say, was it helped me actually increase my testosterone, my manliness, so to speak, because the part of you that takes responsibility is your masculine side. The part of you that is affected by others is your female side, whether it be positive or negative. So what's made us successful in life is that when things go wrong, we adjust. We look at how can I make this better? What do I have to do? What's right for me to do? There's a problem. Yes, other people are involved in the problem, but what's my share of it? What can I do? And you know, we're looking at our body and we're looking at the environment. Biohacking is taking responsibility. It's a very masculine thing to biohack, which is, all right, well, that's the, this is affecting me this way. I've got toxins here where I'm going to fast. And again, fasting is another reason my testosterone levels stay very healthy. I have to do it at least once a month. I love fasting, meaning like a two mm -hmm. or three day fast once a month. Particularly the way it shows up for me in my 70s is I'll start getting a belly fat. Now, once belly fat starts to happen, we know for men and for women, belly fat generates estrogen. So I don't need it, <laughs> you know, wisdom also, and love generate estrogen. I don't need any more estrogen, right? I have wisdom, I've got love. If I've got belly fat, it's just cooking estrogen all the time, making more. And so that's something I want to avoid. And so by fasting, it keeps my belly fat down. I do intermittent fasting all the time, but then I occasionally will do two days or three days. So powerful. And of course, a plug for your book, I learned how to fast better your way. So people should know that. This is the oh, ultimate. Yeah, it's, it's the ultimate. We need to have a way that can work for us. And what you've done is explore those different ways for different people, easy fasting, then you build up towards easy to go two or three days. Once a year, I'll do seven days. I think that's very powerful for my longevity. And you know, I'm in a competition with you as well. I'm planning 132. We'll see. Right. <laughs> I, I really hope that you beat me, and I also hope that I beat you. And either way, I'll be able to compete, so we all win. <laughs> you know, anyway, so, so back, I'm just bringing in the testosterone factor in this, you know. It's, it's a matter of not whining, not complaining, not being upset, but also you hit some, there's a place inside when you're listening to a woman where it starts to challenge your ability to stay cool, calm, and collected stop the conversation. And that was like really important. And my way of stopping the conversation, I've tried different ways. A simple way is, okay, hold on here. I need to go to the bathroom. 
<laughs> that's one. That's one way. It's kind of like you're you're, you're boxing in the ring, and then you, you go to your corners. You let the cat out of the bag. So I, I admit that I may have used that a few times in in my marriage, <laughs> but eventually, I think she heard one of our episodes where you talked about that, and and then she's like, "I know why you're doing that." And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> like I have to poop. And, and anyway, so um, yeah, it, it only works if you don't overuse it. I, I heard, but um, for sure. But it, again, it's simply look. I, I want to understand what you're saying. I need to think about it, and I'm out of here. You just got to go walk away. You can't try to be the good guy who's read my book, and you're supposed to just listen and listen and listen. Yeah. It's not tell me more forever. It's tell me more if you can actually persist. Now, here's for the women listening. Okay, this is yeah. a unrealistic expectation to expect your husband to listen to your complaints, analyze your complaints and realize one complaint a week and turn it into a request. That's it. Talk about your feelings. Yes, you need to talk about your feelings. Talk about your feelings about other things. You've got a life out there. You've got a job you do. There's all, Every day has got frustrations. Every day has disappointments. You're raising your kids. Any situation, there's frustrations, there's disappointments, there's concerns, there's embarrassment, there's feelings of guilt. These are emotions that you can share with him about your life rather than your frustration with him, your disappointment with him. And if you don't have enough emotional intelligence to articulate the various emotions that you have about your life that has nothing to do with him, then all of your emotions, because you're suppressing them, will get projected onto him. So rather than being a little frustrated with him, you had five frustrating things happening today. Now you're five times more frustrated with Dave, as opposed to at work, this happened. And this, this is something nobody talks about. Don't talk to your husband about what's wrong with him. Talk about him about what's wrong with your life. And then when you do that, then say to him always, I just need to share these feelings. And then afterwards, I'm going to feel really good. So you share some feelings and then you let them know that you feel very good by always finishing up by talking about some problems you had with this person or that happened or this fed on. Then start up, but I'm really grateful because I'm happy because I love you and I'm so happy that you listened to me and I'm proud of myself for handling all these problems. And then go for a hug. It's it. She has to learn how to process her feelings and use you as a mirror, somebody who's aware of what she's going through, but you don't have to fix anything. If women can learn this, you'll only have a happy, fulfilled man who's trying to please you all the time and doesn't resent the fact that he's giving so much to you because he's getting so much back. Because what he wants and what he needs is to feel that you, de- you can trust him, you depend on him, that you accept him just as he is, no complaints, and that you appreciate him for the things he does provide. These are possible. But so many women, when I talk about trusting a man, they put their finger in their mouth and go, ah, like, yeah, I'm supposed to trust him. This is like heresy. You know, this is like today, black people standing up and just saying, white people are terrible. The last thing I heard was pale, male, and white. (laughs) Pale, male, and some other bad word. How can people stand up and say these things? It's so racist. It's so crazy. It sort of the whole society is tipped over where women feel it's fine to say bad things about men. At least men used to never say bad things about women. <laughs> now it's start we're bouncing right. back. A lot of men, you know, push women down. We have to start loving. Yeah. You know, what happened to love? I was raised to not say bad things about any group of people uh, because uh, it's actually the individuals. <laughs> In the group, <laughs> that person did something, but whether someone else is a member of the group, uh, and and if you're going to be you know complaining about men or women, it doesn't work. If you're looking for patterns in men and women so that you can you know Im- improve understanding, you know I, I'm I'm all over that, uh, and it feels like there really are some of these some of these patterns in in our hormone levels, but. You seem like you're relatively extreme on the effects of estrogen. Like, are there papers on this? Like, how do you know about this stuff? Because this is really cool. And I, by the way, I find what you're saying to be accurate and true in my own experience. But how do, how do we know that this raises and lowers estrogen or testosterone? Okay, so let's start with testosterone. There's more research on that. If you look at you're a man and you have a football team or baseball team, soccer team, and they win you can measure your testosterone goes up. 
why did it go up? Because your team won. You were successful. And if they lose, your testosterone goes down and you feel bad. Every man knows when you're not feeling successful, <laughs> you feel bad, okay? This is such simple knowledge. Now, but, but there's a study showing your testosterone shoots way high when your team wins. Okay, now's another one. They looked at all of the, you know, they've got records, medical records of millions of men in this country. They go for checkups. And for every age group, there's an average testosterone for that age group. So you average it out. So you're 25 year olds, there's a high and a low. There's a, uh, 35, you know, you've got your averages. Now within that section, let's say you're 35 years old, some men will have the highest testosterone on average. They're single. If you, the next level down, you're in a committed relationship with a woman. Now there's no research saying if you're gay or whatever. So I don't have ex knowledge on all that. I'm just talking about heterosexual. So you're in a committed relationship with a woman. The next one is that it drops in, in for that age group, the next lowest level is you're married. So when you're getting married, you're suddenly in a lower testosterone level at, on average than all the single men. And then you have children, you go down again. If you're average, these are averages. And you have grandchildren, it goes down again. Yeah. Now, I don't have to be average. You don't have to be average. We're consciously being doing things to biohack our bodies and our minds and our heart and, you know, to, to, be optimal. But the average, it just goes down. Now, let me give you my experience now as a grandfather. Now I've got five grandchildren. So, but the fifth is now only eight months old. And I go twice a week and play with the daughter, the granddaughter for two hours. I bring them food, I socialize, and but I'm caring for the baby. I'm never run out of energy, right? I mean, I'm on, I have so much energy. But when I yeah. spend two hours with a baby, I am exhausted afterward. <laughs> I'm just going to take a nap. I am down for it. Because what happened is that relationship, loving relationship raises estrogen levels up. So your estrogen goes higher and higher. And there's a tendency, if you're not also feeling like you're solving problems, fixing things on your male side, your testosterone will tend to go down. So I'm just playing okay. with this little baby and being happy. So my point is, there's another research study showing that the more intimate men are with people, okay, personal relationships, it lowers their testosterone on average. So that's very profound. Okay. The next one is if you look at simply the hormone charts, what is a healthy hormone chart? When a woman is healthy, her estrogen levels will be 10 times more than the average man. When a woman is also healthy, her testosterone levels will be quite high. But a man's testosterone levels to be healthy is 10 times higher. And for some men, it's 20 times higher. So there's no absolute for every man, no absolute for every woman. But there are these huge diversities between what women need to be happy and what men need to be happy. For example, we talked about the guy who works out at four o'clock in the morning. What was his name? <laughs> David Goggins, I think. So you look at David Goggins. When you see a man who's got big shoulders, he's going to have a littler waist typically. That's a mesomorph body type. If you're born with a mesomorph body type, then you have to make more testosterone to feel good. If you're born with oh, an no extra... Yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. If, if you're like a V-shape, you need more testosterone or you're going to be unhappy. That's right. You need to make more testosterone. So that if you go... That. Yeah. But that's why I like to shoot up testosterone all the time. It totally, totally solves my problems. <laughs> testosterone. Again, making testosterone is better than shooting up testosterone. Just to I, make I've that heard point. it. I've heard that. No, I, I do both as well as I can, but it, right, it's been right. low my whole life. So, okay. Yeah. So you basically, if you shoot up testosterone, okay, it's going to have some biological effects in your body. And it might also give you a great, greater level of confidence to take action and it's, it's yeah. the confidence to take action and actually put it into action that's going to be healthy for you and raise your testosterone on your own. It's kind of like antidepressants do very little, except sure. it's placebo. And it might, due to the placebo effect, it might cause people to have more confidence in interacting with other people. And that would be the benefit of it. Uh, so mm -hmm. do it for a short period of time, set up some good habit patterns. And then let your relationships stimulate the brain chemicals of happiness and the hormones of motivation and happiness. You know, when I talked about motivation, it's, I think 
for the women that are listening. It's very important to understand men. And it's uh, you asked for research. Let me do a little bit more on, on women yeah. and estrogen. Yeah. This uh, dawned on me is it turns out that back when I wrote Men Are From Mars, all of the uh, medical community was asking me, how do we get men to start going to their doctors? Okay, women all go to the doctors way more than men do. And it turns out that when you depend on someone for something, a hormone that feels really good gets produced. Now, I don't have any research on that one other than just that. One, I got lots of examples. Then I looked in the newspaper and I saw that 90% of the people who go to talk therapy, go to counseling, where you're just going to talk, are women. Why do men not do that? Now, men might go for strategies. That's now we have this whole new field called coaching where you're going to learn strategies mm -hmm. as opposed to just sitting there and talking. I'm telling you, many of these counselors would just sit and ask questions of women and they leave and they feel better. Why do they feel better? And why is it 90% of the people who go to talk therapy just to feel better are women? Because you do feel better. It raises your estrogen levels. Then you look at oxytocin. Now, oxytocin was considered to be the magic hormone. And in the 90s, I would talk about that. Is I went to the malls and I saw that, you won't see this today, but women were different back then. You see a mother with a baby in a baby carriage and other women would flock. They just, they glow. They see that little baby. Mm -hmm. and, and I go, okay, what is that hormone? And you find that's the hormone oxytocin. And then later, uh, 10 years later, they did research showing oxytocin is associated with low stress in women. Remember, women need to make 10 times more estrogen for their feelings of well-being. If a woman wants to orgasm, her estrogen levels have to become double 10 times more than a man. These are all biological studies. We can measure towards ovulation. For a woman to ovulate, her estrogen levels have to double. And they also have research studies showing that when women's estrogen levels are close to ovulation, they find men very attractive and they want to be penetrated. Okay. They, mm -hmm. they have that desire for sex. Okay. So you put all this stuff together and you realize she feels, I need a man. Okay. She's in touch with, I need a man. I want to take it. I want to hold him. I want to take him inside of me. That happens when her estrogen levels go to a higher level than normal. And then you have women who are unhappy. Okay, this is depressed women have low estrogen levels. And now to get a little bit more sophisticated, after ovulation, depressed women have not enough progesterone. Now, progesterone is produced, again, it's taken a long time to figure this psychological aspect of it out, but there's research studies that show that progesterone gets produced in social bonding. Okay, mm -hmm. That's well-known social. Oxytocin has been associated with well-being. We know that well-being in women is also their estrogen levels have to be uh, 10 times higher than a man's. So oxytocin allows estrogen to go up because when you feel safe, think about when you feel safe, you can depend on someone. You know, when I'm standing, for me as a man, I have a female side. And sometimes, like when I was in Russia, I had this bodyguard who was like six, eight, you know, big giant guy. And I was never, I never feel afraid. Okay, I don't walk around feeling I don't have any awareness of being afraid unless I'm driving a car at 130 miles an hour or something, you know? So it's just not in my nature. But when I was with that man, I noticed how good I felt. It was like, it feels really comfortable to have someone to protect you, you know? And this is, I realized this is what women get out of men is basically when you feel that I've got protection, your estrogen levels go up. And what do you feel inside? You feel I can depend on this person to protect me. It's that feeling mm -hmm. of, I can depend on someone. I, and what do women always say when women are stressed? What do they always say? They say, I can't trust you. This is like the killer of relationships because the number one testosterone producer in men is you trust me. If you trust me, my testosterone goes up. When I come and speak at your conferences, those people, oh, John Gray's here. I already know they're going to love my talk. They're here because they, they want to hear my talk because they expect something good. When you feel mm -hmm. trusted as a man that you can deliver the goods, your testosterone levels shoot up. You know, wow. I, I, it's the language. Now, now, what what raises estrogen? What raises estrogen is 
when a woman feels I can trust you, why do I, why can I trust you? Because I know you care about me. I know you think I'm important. I know that you'll be there for me. So the languages of love and, and, and men are from Mars are still the languages of love because they're the languages of hormones. When you give me a message that you trust me for something of value, my testosterone goes up. If I'm not perfect and you accept me, you're not trying to change me, my testosterone goes up. If, and I'll give you an example of that. One time I was doing some photo shoots in China <laughs> and people had their photos with me and I'm like, well, let me comb my hair. And, and the woman says, oh, nobody cares what you look like. You're a genius. <laughs> Does that raise your testosterone, right? Yeah, of course. Of course. That means I don't have to be perfect to be lovable and I'm trusted. Wow. And so the other message, that's acceptance. So men need to feel, accept when you get acceptance, your testosterone goes up. When you get, <clears throat> and that's also forgiveness as well. You don't have to be perfect. You know, what women say they want a funny man, actually what they want is a man who's, who's light about himself. He has a lightness. He's not like always defending himself, like, no, I'm right. I have to be right all the time. Oh, I made a mistake. Oh, I'm a little embarrassed. Whatever. Playfulness, that's acceptance. So you accept him, you trust him, and the big one, another testosterone producer, is you appreciate him. That's mm. the language of love that raises testosterone. And it will raise a woman's testosterone as well if I give her that trust and acceptance and I appreciate her. But I'm like a child. You see... If I'm in the place of depending on her, uh, accepting her what, no matter what, and, and, and appreciating everything she does for me, she's going to feel like she's my mother and she's going to get turned off to me. What she needs mm -hmm. to feel is she has that sense of she can depend on me for things, appreciates what I provide, etc. What she needs uh, to open her heart is messages that say, and this is as you relate to those things I just said that boost testosterone, what boosts estrogen is when somebody feels they can depend on you for their safety and their security, which is that means I care about you. If there's a fire, I'm going to run and get you. I'm not going to get somebody else. I'm going to find you. You're mm -hmm. number one. Caring is like if you get a new car and you're a man, and you, you like your car and somebody dents it <laughs> or scratches across the car, it's like they scratched you. Well, that's what women want to feel is to bump up their estrogen, is that I care about you. You're important to me. You're significant to me. Second one, I understand where you're coming from. Women so much need understanding because they, they won't admit it, but they feel like they're crazy or they feel unlovable or they feel like they're being too needy or too demanding, whatever. And what they need is some messages saying, I still love you. I still love you. You know, my wife says to me, <laughs> just, you do so much for me. I feel like I don't deserve it. I say, yes, you do. <laughs> yes, you do. I love you. You know, this is the dynamic where they need to feel mm -hmm. that they're not being seen as crazy or demanding or, or, or negative. So they need caring. They need understanding. And they also need respect. And this is where my teaching varies from everything in the books. I, I don't know. Nobody has ever pointed this out. But what is the word respect means? Well, I have my interpretation of, again, you have translation of language, but this word respect, I hear it over and over where men think, I want respect, you know, you're not respecting me. Uh, I, actually, what men really need is appreciation. When somebody respects you, that means they do things for you. I'm going to do things for you. My, I have a baby who's crying in the night. I'm going to get up and I'm going to take care of that baby because I respect the needs of that baby. If I'm driving in a way that makes my wife feel unsafe, I'm going to respect her comfort needs and adjust how I drive to make her happy. But at the same time, I don't want to feel like I'm a slave or a wimp or just pleasing her. But I have to realize she's sitting to the right of me in the car. If she doesn't feel comfortable, even though I'm comfortable, I need to respect her. So here's a little practical example of respecting a woman as the best foreplay in the world because I drive fast sometimes. And if it's uncomfortable for my wife, if we're in a hurry, she's happy for me to drive fast. But if we're not in a hurry, she, she feels a little stressed. So she could say, you're driving too fast. Well, that's not nice to say. You should slow down. Well, that's not nice to say. It's like, you're the boss of me. Don't be the boss of me. So how to communicate slow down. 
Well, we worked it out. Just grab the handle of the car. She said, grab the handle. And I say, oh, I'd be happy to slow down. And now I slow down. Then I put my hand on her thigh and I say, and I did that for you. And she says, I know. And I greatly appreciate it. See, that's where you're no longer a wimp. You're trying to please a woman, but only because you're getting rewarded so much. You see, it's a, it's a good deal. I'm going to make an adjustment, but I'm getting something back. And a lot of times men yeah. hear me thinking and think, oh, you're just supposed to be a wimp and do everything for women. I said, no, you do what you want to do for her, but you want to do more when what, you, when what you're getting back is great. Okay. See? So, so if you're paid back in, in distrust or disrespect, you're not motivated and then you're kind of that, that wimp you're talking about. But if you do it and it's reciprocated, then... Um, it actually is good for the woman and it's good for the man. And that makes it's sense. It's what a relationship's all about. It's like finding out what your mm -hmm. partner needs. Do your best to provide that. Yeah. And when you're not getting what you need, don't be a baby. You're a grown up. Have a life. You know, my whole message here is don't look to your partner to be happy. Look to your partner to be happier. It's not my job to make her happy. That's her job. It's my job to take her from happy to happier. Likewise. It's not her job to make me happy, but how she responds to me will make me happier. It's not her cooking a meal for me. It's not her cleaning the house for me. That's old fashioned stuff. See, that's when, when men were out in the world and women were at home all day. So they did those things as reciprocity. They were giving back to him because he gave so much for her. But when women are out there being independent, men are being independent, what do women need? What they need is a man's assistance and helping her come back to the female side of her, which is her female hormones. And by the way, you wanted more research on this, which is when you look at women when they're depressed and suicidal, it's usually when the five days are very depressed and very suicidal and very bitchy and awful. It's usually if it happens, it's the five days before her period. And that's when she needs the most progesterone. But all women who have that problem, they've measured this. It's a condition called CPCOS. It's a, a condition which is moody and irritable and unhappy and dissatisfied. They look at what are your hormone imbalances. And at that time, she's making too much testosterone. Her mm -hmm. testosterone levels are really high. And testosterone inhibits the production of progesterone. And biologically, if you look at the actual biochemistry of this, when you make, in a woman's body, when she makes testosterone, she uses up her progesterone. So progesterone is a precursor for making testosterone. What produces testosterone is it goes way up when you're being challenged by life and you have to protect yourself and you don't have a man to protect you, your testosterone shoots up. So you, you can just see how this happens is when a woman doesn't feel safe that I can depend on someone, then I have to depend on mm. myself. Okay. See, it's real simple. I'm on my female side. My husband's protecting me. My husband's doing things for me or giving me something of meaning, which is he's loving me in a way that says he cares about me. He understands me. He doesn't judge me. He doesn't make fun of me. He honors my needs, my sensitivities. And that honoring needs and sensitivities is respect. Now, I need respect, of course, but respect is not my major need. My major okay. need is testosterone. Once my testosterone is fine, yeah, respect me all you want. That's great. That's mm -hmm. just extra okay. on top. So humans need all those forms of love, but for hormonal balance, we need to lean in one direction or the other. I have a couple of questions about estrogen for you. Well, one's an observation, one's a question. Your talk about how not being trusted or appreciated suppresses testosterone in men, which suppresses um, dopamine and, and happiness and all. This is why coming after a guy's uh, reputation is is such a sneak attack uh, and it does lead to to disruption i'm i'm actually realizing like like joe rogan dropped my testosterone right cuz cuz there was a time geez, like 10 years ago or something where um he had a financial interest in a competitor to bulletproof and and all of a sudden it went from you know dave asprey changed everything for me to you know he's a liar and a con artist so all of a sudden i felt untrusted by my community cuz a bunch of trolls came to my website that's why trolling is so bad for people in general and so it was, it was really dysregulating. And I didn't understand it was about the testosterone dopamine axis because the reality was every time Joe said, you know, Dave's a bad man or whatever the insult of the day was, 
it actually meant I was selling more coffee. It didn't matter what he said. Like it was actually good for business, but I couldn't see that because I was like so rocked by it. And that's you know water under the bridge. I'm I'm grateful for the experience because it it did grow resilience for me. But when a person comes after someone's reputation, like the, the way they do, and someone says something that's not in the current narrative, they come after your reputation. It's it's a big structured thing they do in big media. Uh, and you'll you'll see like there's a very standard way of of taking down someone to make everyone think they're not trustworthy, which then dysregulates their stuff. What's the defense against that? I mean, is that the time to start injecting testosterone? Is that the time to meditate? Like, what do you do if there's an unwarranted attack on your reputation that makes you feel like you're not trusted, which has a hormonal effect? Huge, huge. See, we're we're relational beings. How we interpret reality around us dramatically affects our hormone system and dysregulates us. So I'm no stranger to what you just talked about. Uh, yeah, I was canceled. Cool. I, I was canceled in the year 2000. Men are from Mars. At, at the end of the 2000, all the papers were saying Men are from Mars was the biggest selling book of all books. Not <laughs> all books, mm-hmm. self help, everything. That whole that whole decade, it was considered one of the top ten most influential books for the whole decade, yeah. for the whole quarter century. So I was getting huge publicity. I never received a positive print interview. <laughs> you know, video, see, on a video, I show myself. How can you be critical of me? You can, yeah. you know, and, and usually the medium of, of TV interviews, they want you to look good. You know, we're having a fun, friendly thing. This is such family friendly ideas. You know, it's all positive. But the, the writers, they're all jealous of me oh, because yeah. I'm this big seller and they're writers and they're getting nothing. <laughs> all right. So they're just looking at me and they're just furious, and jealous. And like, why is he getting all these books sold? You know, so. So they always have that edge because I'm a writer, they're writers, and so they took it out on me. So that was devastating to me. And so that was one of the hardest things. And particularly when, you know, I, I did the biggest theater on Broadway, the most successful show in history monetarily, because and got terrible reviews, but it sold out every night. Okay. And they were upset because I didn't even have a stage set. I, I'm enough. I come out, I'm enough. I'm doing my thing. And they I was a critical of that. And I am guess a little play on this one, but at one point I would bring people up and work with them on the stage for fun. And one guy was a vaudeville comedian and he was so funny. I, I just let him talk for a while. I was funnier than me because part of my thing is humor as well. And his wife said, Samuel, get off the stage. <laughs> you know, and the whole audience <laughs> booed her because they all like, I liked him. Everybody's liking it. It was, you know, it's fun. And so the, the New York Times USA Today, they said, oh, Gray gave his talk and the people booed. That was <laughs> one. Now, see, you have to realize I have already toughened up. This is yeah. eight years of massive success and lots of criticism, but still I'm the biggest author. But this one got to me because I found out the next day that some parent had given their child that article and the child brought it to school for my daughter and all the kids made fun of her. Oh, your dad, you think he's so great. He was booed off the stage. Wow. That got to me. So I'm just giving an example of, you know, things really mm-hmm. hit you deep. So that triggered huge drop in testosterone. If you look at biologically, estrogen levels off the chart. Okay. So how do you get out of that? You know, I can meditate or whatever, but I was just like, couldn't get beyond it. And it was a technique that I used all the way through that whole period of my life. When people were critical of me, knocked me down, I had to pick myself back up and Two ways to do it. This is my technique. When something really gets you, you've got to process your feelings. You've got to process your mm-hmm. emotions. Uh, there's an old saying in China, uh, men don't cry unless their heart is broken, which symbolizes if it's a big thing, you need to process your emotions. If it's a little thing, the, the normal stuff of life, you just ignore it and go do something to bump up your testosterone. You know, Have your testosterone building mm-hmm. hobbies mm-hmm. that you can do that have, don't, don't have to do with talking about feelings. But there's a place, and this is more common for men today who are actually have way too much estrogen. Things will trigger them. They'll get all upset. If you are all upset, two steps. One, first, go out and do something to bump your testosterone up as much as possible. If you exercise, use your muscles. That's a really key factor is using your muscles, solving problems. Do whatever your skill is. Go and do it. Put your feelings to the side but then come back to those feelings because they didn't go away. That means you have to process them. What's been triggered 
And this is what I believe about men versus women. Whenever men are hugely triggered, it's activating your childhood. Now, yep. in psychology, we think everything is activating your childhood, and it is to some extent. Women can be activated from yesterday, okay? So, see, they're <laughs> estrogen beings. They have emotion all the time. They're pushing it down, pushing it down. So they could be upset about stuff, and it's just today. But for us, if something hits you big, it's because it triggered something deep from your childhood. So whether it be something about today or something from your childhood, the process is the same. Sit down. This is what I did. I've done a thousand of these during the 90s when I was being attacked all the time. Rarely do I need to do it now. But the, I sit down with a piece of paper and I write out what I'm feeling. I write out I'm angry, what I want. I write out what I'm disappointed or sad about or hurt by, and I, what I want. I go into what I'm afraid of, and they're all irrational. So I'm afraid no one will like me again. I'm afraid I'm over the hill. I'm afraid I'm a liar. I'm afraid I'm a fraud. I'm afraid they're right about me. Whatever. See, the, I don't believe any of those things. But if you've got negative emotions, it's because they're irrational. So a rational guy like you has to say, temporarily, I'm going to exaggerate the irrational aspect of these strong okay. feelings I'm having. And you write out anger, sadness, fear, and then regret. And then, and each time, and what I want, what I want, what I want. You know, the most powerful thing to feel good is to be in touch with what I want. Anybody who's depressed has stopped wanting. Anybody who's afraid is, I, I don't want, I don't want. But every negative emotion is an I don't want. So you write out the negative emotion and then what I want. Write out the sadness and what I want. Write out the fear and what I want. Write out the guilt, shame, regret, whatever, and what I want. And go into what I want. Then, that's the first step. Then change the subject. And imagine having what you want. You go into, okay, I'm, I'm just going to focus on what I want to happen and imagine it happening. And when I imagine what is happening, I'll feel better. Because mm -hmm. all negativity is just imagining the worst that hasn't happened, yeah. right? So, so now I'm going to use my, and I'm going to imagine the best. And, I, and I'm going to go back to what I want is people to think I'm wonderful. And I just go back and I remember times when people said, you're wonderful. Now, what I do is, you know, I've got millions of videos online, right, of, of views, millions, billions, whatever. And I just go and watch some of my videos. My favorite one is my TED Talk, which is 20 minutes. And I just look at everybody's responses. You know, you just go mm. talk to some people. Love you, Dave. Call me up. And I just say, look, you changed my whole life. Biohacking is everything. It's amazing. And talk to somebody else. So you, you, you've already had that experience. So after I've gone through the negative, focus on what I want. Then I imagine having what I want, which is people thinking I'm great, people think I'm wonderful, people thinking that I made a difference in their life. That's what I want, is I'm successful. Mm -hmm. Once I've imagined that, then I come back to, how does that make me feel? Well, that I'm grateful. I'm happy. I, I'm, uh, yeah. I feel love. I love my wife. I love my children. I love my life and whatever. And I'm proud of myself. So four positive emotions to go against those four negative emotions. Now, Dave, you're like super famous. So it doesn't, when you get... Uh, something cracks your emotions because you're a very grounded man. It's really about the childhood. So what you do is you go through the feelings of, mm. of you know, it's all over. I'm not good enough. I should be better. I won't be successful. I'm being mistreated. I'm not being seen. How cruel. Okay. Then you listen to that. And you go, gee, how did I feel like that as a little child? But I yes. didn't realize it. And I didn't realize it. So now you just go back and you remember That's being right. one incident. Okay. Just go and just give yourself the realization that what I'm feeling now is what I was feeling then and didn't know it. So then you yep. write out your anger, sad, afraid, and guilty as a kid, as if you're writing to one of your parents and saying what you want, what you want, what you want. Then write out the response you want to hear from the parent. And that's called reparenting. And then you yep. give yourself that response. And then you say, you know, how does that make me feel? I feel great. I feel wonderful. I feel safe. Wow. I feel good enough. I feel like I can make my dreams come true. So what I've done is changed how I feel by adjusting my hormones, I basically mm -hmm. got, you know, when the parent is reparenting you, they're giving you messages. I appreciate you. I accept you. I believe in you. I'm there for you. You're the one for, you know, you're the great kid. But the key then, again, every one of these stages, people have to listen to this again and again. These are significant stages. What I'm feeling now, how it relates to my past. Imagine being then, write out the four negative emotions. Imagine the parent saying, I understand why you're angry. I understand why you're sad or disappointed. I understand you're afraid about this. I understand. You have to be understood. The female side of us needs to feel somebody cares. Somebody understands what we're going through. They're not saying you shouldn't feel that way. 
but understands how we feel and then respects us by saying, "Ah, it's my fault. I'm so sorry. I made a mistake. I'm going to change. I'm going to give you what you want. Imagine a perfect parent, which no parent is, of course, giving you what you need. And then, then asking yourself, if I got what I need, which I've just imagined, how would that make me feel? And then you would feel who you truly are. You would feel secure. You would feel safe. You feel forgiving. You feel accepting of yourself. A whole bunch of feelings come up that you would have felt as a child if your parent had been able to be there at, for you at that time. Right. It's, it's funny. Um, that idea of re-experiencing a pain and then experiencing the positive thing, that's at the core of the reset process we do at, at 40 Years of Z at my neuroscience clinic, but with amplifications from tech. And Gabby Bernstein's been on the show. She's a friend, I think also a friend of yours, uh, most likely. You know Gabby, right? She, yes. she does a lot of IFS and reparenting stuff. And it, it's a potent thing. And I, I thought you were going to gonna say like the testosterone way though is, you know, you, you imagine all the things that are wrong and, and then what would raise your testosterone? And I like to have a, a wood chipper and I just imagine feeding, you know, the bad people into the wood chipper and my testosterone goes up. Is, is that, is that uh, great? Thing? Get a gun and just shoot it at a target. Your testosterone will go up. <laughs> But see, that was my first step. Really do the test, do the testosterone things, and if it's still, if that other, if that negative stuff is still there, then yeah. you know it's your past. It's not right now because all we have to do as men is go solve a problem and feel confident. Yeah. The estrogen comes back down, the testosterone goes up, and you're in balance. Here's another question, and this is an advanced biohacking question. You might be one of the few people who'd figure who would know an answer to this or a potential answer. We have a problem where testosterone is lower everywhere in men and women because of pollution. And yeah. we have a problem with more estrogen in men because of societal changes and all that. There are drugs called selective estrogen receptor degraders or SERDs like Fazlodex. And you take it, it blocks the effect of estrogen on receptors and it degrades the receptors so that they don't like estrogen as much. Thoughts on maybe taking that stuff so that you're just a little bit more able to handle the world we live in today? Well, I, I'm not familiar with that, but does it actually destroy the receptor site or does it, it temporarily it degrades lower the receptors? It doesn't so destroy them fully, but they just don't work as well. Okay, my first reaction is there are men who make no estrogen and they're sociopaths and psychopaths. Yeah, they, they run they run for office, right? I got you on That's that. right. They're all politicians. Anybody who can not care what people are doing. A few bankers or you know, World Economic Forum. Yeah, but we, yeah, know yeah, right. we, we know all that. Okay, so the, these are, these are psychopaths, you know sociopaths. So they don't care what other people think. They just care about what they think. And what's interesting, and I'll give an example of this. When I first became aware of this, I, when I saw the movie Terminator and I got in my car afterwards, it was like suddenly I was revving my engine to race out of this place. And I noticed the whole parking lot, garage, everybody, all the guys were revving their engines. Okay, no, Normally I don't see that. So why did I suddenly feel this strong mm. power, you know? And I noticed I feel so powerful. What I felt powerful is the whole movie I was identifying with a robot because the action figure oh. men will typically identify with the action figure. And the action <laughs> figure has no emotions. You will so be it, terminated. Okay. <laughs> it, exactly. <laughs> so if I have no emotions, I will be the most powerful person in the world. Because emotion, my emotions say, I care about you. I don't want to hurt your feelings. I don't want to mislead people. I want to be kind. I want to be fair. You know, this, this is our feeling self. This is our conscience. This is, this is our connection to the divine. You know, this is our female side. We came out of our mothers, you know, through the heavens. It's our female side that we connect with the divine. It's just if we have too much female side, our testosterone is weak and we don't do anything with that. And, and think about a guy whose testosterone is weak. He feels, I'm not confident to achieve my goals. I'm not going to do it. And so what does he then do? He goes over and eats a lot or he wants to, you know, have fun. And in the old days, it was called a playboy. If you never earned your way into the world and you got a lot of money from your parents, so you don't have confidence that I can do it myself, the testosterone is low. And typically they would become playboys. Not every man who has wealthy parents is a playboy, but that's typically it. You're a drug addict, you're a playboy. You want to do fun things. You just want to do enjoyment. You just want pleasure as opposed to getting pleasure from doing things that are of service to others. So there's the male way to happiness is you do things not to be happy. You do things to be of service, to be productive, to solve problems. And happiness comes from behind. It's literally an experience of the soul that is always behind us watching. And that joy comes 
because you're in your role as a man solving problems, it just comes upon you. Just like when I'm doing my exercises this morning, when I always go that extra bit where it's a little harder, you feel so good. You know, it just, it comes in because you applied yourself to do what you can do. When men don't do that, then I don't feel confident. So I'm not going to do that. Then we go over to our female side and do what we like to do, do what we enjoy doing, do what's pleasurable, do what stimulates us, do what gives us a big dopamine rush. So anyway, my, my warning there is, is it, it can make you a psychopath if you have no estrogen as a man. And I think that when men have too much estrogen, you can just, at least my experience, is men who have too much estrogen, they talk too much about their feelings. They give too much validity to their emotions and their feelings, and they share too much. They talk too much. See, I talk a lot, but everything I'm talking about is solving problems, is I know what the uh-huh. problems are out there. And I'm constantly, every word is, is this, how's it going to be heard? I want to make sure it's going to help people, not hurt people. You know, this is very testosterone. A, a male needs to work. And if we don't work, again, here's more research that when you look at the insurance actuaries, they know that when a man retires, he has two to three years before he has a heart attack. Now, why does he have a heart attack? What happens? They also know when a man retires, his testosterone levels go down. And this is something you don't see anywhere. But the bottom line is that when men retire, they're way more vulnerable to having a heart attack. And the heart Mm -hmm. attack, you you can associate with oxidized cholesterol. It's not cholesterol, but it's oxidized cholesterol. could be one of the conditions. But why is it oxidized? Because you're in a state of stress. And you're in a state of stress when men are not producing when their testosterone goes down, they're in a state of stress. Even if they're sitting there watching TV and doing nothing, their body is in a state of stress. It seems somewhat relaxing. And again, it is relaxing. Here's, again, paradoxes all over the place. If I work hard, like I just, I'll be, I'll be doing three clients a day in this show. I work hard. I put a lot of energy out. Now I can go and I can watch TV and I'm relaxing. That could be cave time. I'm relaxing, and by relaxing, I'm rebuilding my testosterone to go out and fight another battle. But if that day I didn't fight another battle, if I didn't do anything and I just sit in front of the TV set, it's going to cause stress inside of me because I'm not doing what I'm here to do. I'm procrastinating being a man. I'm putting it off. And everybody knows when you really want to do something, you procrastinate. It's a major source of stress because you're not following through on what you said you're going to do. I love that. It makes so much sense. So masturbation in men versus masturbation in women, what does it do to men? Okay. So you get a huge dose of dopamine, uh, estrogen surge, and a bigger surge of testosterone. Ironically, research shows that a man to have an erection has to have a surge of estrogen, but he also has to have a lot of testosterone. If you have no testosterone, and you're with a woman, you get a surge of estrogen, but you don't get turned on. That's why married men over time don't get turned on to their wives. And this is very common, is he has so much estrogen because he loves her. He depends on her for the extra support she gives him. And that's important. You should depend on that. But you should be getting enough messages that says, you know, you're the, you're the guy. You're providing and protecting and providing a support that she needs. You're feeling appreciated. And you do something and you get appreciated. Okay, so that's, so if your testosterone is low and you love someone, your estrogen will go up and you won't be able to get an erection. If you have testosterone go really high and you have no estrogen, you won't get erections either. This, this is what's happened. This is your sociopaths and psychopaths. They can't get erections through love. Well, we don't, I don't want to analyze that yeah. right now. But the, the bottom line here is that we do need female energy <laughs> to, to, raise, to raise our testosterone even higher. And so we have to have some of the estrogen to get turned on. So the thing that happens when you go online and you do pornography and you do uh, masturbation is if, it's a, if you're masturbating to 64,000 people that want you, women that want you undressing in front of you, your subconscious mind thinks you're the alpha male of the universe. Uh, if you are a monkey tribe, this is interesting. If you're a beta monkey, but the alpha dies, he's the one that all the females want to have sex with the most. Is he the alpha? Because he has more... His testosterone levels, if measured, will be double all of the betas. He has double the testosterone. And then when he dies, the monkeys will fight amongst themselves and one will become the, the top. In, that, um, in one day, his testosterone doubles just because of his status in the hierarchy. And once his testosterone doubles, 
what goes along with that is all the females want to have sex with him. So when you get this illusion that females want to have sex with you, you feel you've earned it, that you're the, you're the alpha. And so automatically your testosterone levels double and they go up and then they crash back down. As with everything, when you overstimulate, receptor sites close down. And biologically, the porn sites will all say, oh, te- masturbation doesn't lower your testosterone. Uh, let's look at one long-term study, which is the fact that every year men's testosterone levels go down 1%. And you can't even find men that don't do porn and masturbate. They can't even do studies on students, young men, who, ha- who, ha- who aren't doing porn. It's just very rare. So what we know is after sex, your testosterone does go down to baseline. But over time, masturbating or having sex all the time, your testosterone levels will start going down, down, down. Because after sex, what you have is a drop in testosterone as well. You have sex. That's when you want to pull away. You want to go to your cave, so to speak. You withdraw a bit. That this disconnection is going to help restore balance and raise your testosterone. And that's called the recovery period. When you masturbate, what happens is there's a natural urge in young men. Your testosterone's up. You're getting erections. If you do this, I'm talking to the young guys. When you do this, you're training your body to ejaculate. If you do this, this is just upward stroke on the top of your penis. You're training your penis. You'll feel pleasure, but you don't need to ejaculate. And on you're, the top. Okay. Yeah, on the top. He said, if, if my penis, it, yeah, it's the top of the penis going up. There's less sensation there. So you're training yourself to be aroused without needing to be too aroused. Too aroused basically means your estrogen levels have shot up too high. Remember, pleasure is estrogen. When you're doing anything that's pleasurable, you're making estrogen. Anything you love to do is making estrogen. So estrogen levels are rising, and when they go so high and your testosterone isn't matching it, now you're mainly estrogen dominant, your body basically ejaculates. You're out of balance. It's a tension builds up and the intensity builds up in your release. The whole idea of learning to make love without ejaculating is making sure that the intensity doesn't go too high. It just gets higher and higher and higher and your body adjusts to it over time. It adjusts and it adjusts. The research on 25-year-old men, when they, when they had sex with their wives, Uh, and they abstain from sex for six days. On the seventh day, when they wake up, their testosterone levels increase by 50% or more. So this increase. Mm -hmm. Not yet having sex. sex Or from ejaculation. From ejaculation. Well, their study was abstaining from sex, but basically for most people that meant not ejaculation. So they didn't ejaculate. If on Tuesday they had sex and they ejaculated, and on Saturday they had sex and they ejaculated, when Saturday comes around next week, they don't have 50% more testosterone. And if every week you have sex twice a week, and so you're never starting out with that 50% higher, women are going to not be as thrilled by you. Because when your testosterone goes higher, it raises their estrogen. And there's research to show that as well. Mm -hmm. We put out pheromones that raise women's estrogen. And when women's estrogen goes higher, it puts out pheromones that raise a man's testosterone. We're very yeah. reciprocal in that case. I want to suggest to couples who are not having sex. The reason you're not having sex, you're not feeling the desire. Now, first of all, well, there's so many reasons for these things, but what happens in sex is in the newness of a relationship, you don't have to have good relationship skills to feel sexual attraction. You just need high dopamine. High dopamine, the newness, the danger, the challenge, all that or if you do sex, which is uh, you wouldn't want your mother to find out about, it's dangerous to, to reveal it. Any of those things produce high dopamine. High dopamine in a male raises testosterone. High dopamine in a woman raises her estrogen. Mm. So it amplifies our sexual attraction. But when newness goes out of the relationship, you don't get free testosterone if you're a man. You don't get free estrogen if you're a woman. And it's the, it's the testosterone and estrogen that actually is what's creating the attraction. Because think of a male as the positive pole of a magnet and the female as the negative pole of a magnet. She's receptive. Now, she's not a negative person, but she's got the vagina. He's got the penis. Positive, negative. Now, if you have a positive pole and a negative pole, you don't notice much when the magnets are not so close. But when you get naked and get close, suddenly, if you have those magnets, they'll click. That's the fire gets turned on. 
that's what you can have for a lifetime if, because you can't have dopamine for a lifetime with your partner. Familiarity sets in, serotonin mm-hmm. sets in, comfort and ease set in. You want that comfort and ease, but when you get naked in bed, now you're going with that to happen. And that happens, it will always happen if you have polarity of masculine and feminine. Yeah. I have to be more masculine than her. She has to be more feminine than me. And that's the polarity of her estrogen goes higher, my testosterone goes higher. We will always have that click. It won't be like it was in the beginning, which is like a drug trip, just the newness where you touch one finger and you'll click. Okay. <laughs> but as, as a couple, you need to get into bed. And this is my favorite technique. In bed, be more feminine than the man. What is more feminine? It's more emotional. What is more emo- Where do emotions come from? Insecurity. You can't be angry if you're not insecure. You can't be sad if you're not. It's all insecurity inside. It's needing something. So what do all women need? They need reassurance. The relationships are about needing reassurance for the woman that I care, that I hear you, I still love you, and I respect you. You're the one for me. That's why monogamy can be so good for women. It's just helping to open them up and good for a man because you're keeping your promise. But on the female side, here's the technique, Dave. For the woman to say when you're in the bedroom and you're getting naked, to just feel her vulnerability and at some point say, do you love me? And the man says, yes, I love you. Now, this is a process as opposed to, well, of course I love you. No, you're doing a process to say the words that all women want to hear. Do you love me? I love you. How much do you love me? I love you with all my heart. Am I the one for you? Yes, you're the only one for me. Are you sure you want to be with me? Yes, I always want to be with you. The more things she can bring out and you're the answer to it, now you're penetrating her on an emotional level at a deep level. This is called the reassurance exercise. It will amp up her estrogen because women all want to get reassured. You're still attracted to me. I'm still beautiful. Mm-hmm. I'm still the one for me. I'm the only one for me. You're not mad at me, are you? You still love me. You forgive me from yesterday. See, they're looking for that reassurance. And so and you the just woman give it has to, to ask first, even if she doesn't feel like she needs reassurance, she just asks anyway, which sets up this kind of cycle? Well, I I convince women that they need it. In five minutes, it's hard to convince them. They all, how many women want to look in the mirror and say, you're beautiful? They all want to hear you're beautiful. In my classes, I say, how many women want to hear every day messages that you're beautiful, you know, that you're likable, Mm -hmm. that you, I enjoy being with you. I'm happy to be married to you. I like to be married to you. Everybody loves those kind of things, but it's our female side that wants to hear that. I want to hear that I'm great, wonderful, but that's my female side. So in sex, you want to amplify the feminine and amplify the masculine, which is I'm here to provide the words that you need to hear. And to a certain extent, I'll say this, even if she has to fake it a little bit to get get it going, and he has to fake it a little bit to say, I love you. Once a man expresses something into words, it's you bring, you create from expression. It's like planting your flag. Yes, I love you. Yes, I'm not mad at you. Yes, I'm happy to be married to you. Every time you have sex, you're saying, I'm so happy to be married to you. So what's happening is your brain is going to say, this is what I said, and I'm going to gather evidence to prove that I'm right. Because we all, once we get it out of our mouth, we want to be right about it. So the whole tendency is to build testosterone by putting it out there and her going, yes, I need to hear it and say it again. Are you happy to be with me? Do you enjoy? Are you glad we fell in love? Are you glad we got married? Every woman wants that reassurance deep inside. And so by speaking it out, the question, it will help her find the truth. Just as for men mm-hmm. to give the answer, it will help him find that part of him that owns that answer. And to be clear, because we've talked about this on and offline before, it's not that the guy just says it. It's that he only says it if she asks for it first. Yes. Correct? Yes. It's, this is women having to be on their male and female side, not right. being just waiting. So all oh, women are waiting for you to say all the right words. No, give him the show that you need it. He doesn't know you need to hear all that stuff. So you reveal it. You're looking for reassurance. It is such a powerful concept. Beautiful. John, thanks for your work. Thanks for being on the show. And guys, if you haven't read any of John's books, uh, you're you're missing out. It, it's like, this is some of the most distilled knowledge. Uh, and I've, I've said it before, the reason that I invite uh, John to speak at, at my events I have some great, what was that? Got some oh, great yeah. classes, great classes, yeah. free. Some of them pay for oh, right. it at, Mar- at marsvenus.com, marsvenus.com. People can check that out. All right, guys, check it out. Thanks, John. You're welcome. You're listening to The Human Upgrade with Dave Asprey. 